Welcome back to my workshop. Today, we're gonna be making a knife. First off, we have to come up with our design. I wanna go for something a little bit smaller today. I've got something I'm in the middle of. I've got this like a uh, hunting knife style. And this is a great knife. I love this design and this blade shape. I've made it several times, but I wanna go for something a little more utilitarian, a little more everyday carry than this. So I'm gonna go smaller than this on the blade. Gotta have enough handle to hold on to it. I think that can work. I want kind of a wide blade, but not, not a terribly long one. And uh, if you hear me mumbling, I, I do often just talk to myself as I'm working through designing things. All right, this is what we're gonna start off with. And just because this is what I have on paper doesn't mean it's actually going to be a great design. So what I'm gonna do is I take this paper drawing and I transfer it over to some of this masonite, this particle board stuff, so that I can carve it out of that shape really quick and easily and get a good sense for whether it fits well in my hand. Got the basic shape drawn onto our particle board. Now we're gonna use our tools to cut that out. I got the roughest shape cut out of the knife on the bandsaw, and I'm going to be using the belt grinder with a very rough belt on it, get it shaped a little bit more. All right, that worked out well. I used the grinder, cut this to shape, and as you can see, I didn't follow exactly where my original lines were. I did extend the back a little bit more, as well as the contours in the belly of the handle. So this is a good, fits in your hand, like you can do you know, carving work or using it to chop stuff. It's, it's not huge and unwieldy. You're not gonna have, you don't have a lot of extra blade out the top when you don't need it. So I'm happy with how this fits in my hand out of the particle board, so it's time to move on to metal. This is where we store our metal. We've got several different types of stainless steel here. Uh, RWL, we've got some MagnaCut, 14C28N, and uh, ABL. And we've got our CPM154, which I think is what we're going to be using today. I've done several knives out of this stuff, and I like it quite a bit. So the inch and a half looks like this knife should fit on there just great. So we're gonna cut this off, we're gonna trace the shape, and then we're gonna cut that shape out using pretty similar techniques to how we cut it out of the masonite. Just like with the masonite, now that we got the rough shape cut out, we take it over the belt sander and we clean that profile up. Got the profile in and I'm liking it. I think it looks great. Uh, there's a couple more details I need to do before we move on to heat treatment. Let's do the surface grinding first. Whoa. Thank you. 
right, well, let's go add that spot, which has a specific name and I can't remember what it is right now. Excellent. Now I want to move on to the jimping, those marks on the back that help give your thumb grip so it doesn't slide. We've got the surface ground, we've got the choil added, that's a little notch is called, I forgot, and we have the jimping or the grip for your thumb on the back. However, there is one other thing I forgot and I would be very upset if I heat treated the knife without it, is we have to put holes in the tang for the pins and for weight reduction. So, I'm gonna go over the drill press and put in several of those. That is all the shaping that we're going to do before the heat treatment. So now what I'm gonna do is clean this off with some acetone and then I'm going to wrap it in a stainless steel foil. So we put it in the stainless steel foil, which is kind of like aluminum foil, but made of steel and a little bit thicker and that protects it from too much oxidization. By pressing lightly on the foil, you can kind of see the shape of where the knife is inside the foil. All right, our knife is in the envelope, so now it is time to heat it up. I've got this heating kiln, which has been staying nice and hot at 1,950 degrees. Uh, however, when I open it and put the knife in, it's gonna lose a lot of heat, maybe as much as like 100 degrees. So what I'm gonna have to do is let it heat back up to 1950 and then let it run for 20 minutes. I already see it already dropped down to 1900 and it'll probably keep dropping for another minute or so before it starts going back up. Now that the knife has been heating up at 1950 degrees Fahrenheit for almost, almost 20 minutes, about one minute away, we're going to take it out of the kiln. I'm gonna put it between these metal plates, drop this top plate down onto here. I will then take the vacuum hose, which the vacuum is going to be blowing air out of through this shaped nozzle, and I'm gonna be blowing air all over the knife to help it cool down at the right speed. That should take about a minute and a half, two minutes for something to cool down, at which point I'll be able to take the foil off of it. All right, let's go. like I probably had a tiny, tiny hole poked in the steel from the sharp edges on the tip of the blade, and that's not really gonna be a problem. Nice and straight, everything's looking good, just a tiny bit of rainbow patterning. So now, what I need to do is cool it down a lot more in liquid nitrogen. So I'm going to take this, put it in a liquid nitrogen doer. All of this is to help the crystalline formations inside the metal form just the right way to get the perfect blend of hardness and flexibility. The heat treatment on the knife is done and I did the tempering. That was two cycles of going into the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours each. 
I let it cool down in between and actually threw it into the liquid nitrogen. That's supposed to maybe help a little bit with the toughness of the finished blade. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is a quick test to see how hard the steel is to make sure all of that worked correctly, and then it's on to grinding. To grind the blade, we need to know exactly what we're grinding toward, and that's gonna be right down the middle of this. So I'm going to smooth off the blade face here. That will let me scribe a couple of lines on it to show where I'm trying to grind to. So first, I'm just gonna put a fairly smooth belt on the grinder and clean this edge up. So I need to give myself lines, two of them actually, just the tiniest fraction of an inch apart that run right down the middle of the blade. So what I'm going to do is use this blue marking fluid, it's kind of like a permanent marker that you can paint on, and then I'm going to use this tool, which is a depth gauge, it lets me measure very precisely how high off of this surface I am, and it has a carbide tip on it which will scribe right through the marking fluid onto the metal itself. That should give me a nice line that I can pretty well remove later with acetone when it's time. Now the technique I'm going to use is something called breaking the 90. You've got a pretty sharp 90 degree angle of the face of the blade and the side of the blade. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is start off by, at a very aggressive, like 45 degree angle, I'm going to grind in to those two lines on either side. First on one side, then on the other. After I've ground those two in, I'll start bringing the grind line back to where I want it to be on the final blade. broken the 90 and now what I have is a very thin line running down the center of the blade. It's far too thick to be a cutting edge. It's probably one to one and a half millimeters wide at this point. And I'm going to try and mostly leave it there for most of the knife grind. Now what I need to do is bring that thin line that I just ground back to the thickness that I want the whole blade. To give myself a consistent goal of where I'm trying to etch to on both sides, I'm going to use the same marking fluid and a set of calipers to sort of scribe a line. And that's what I'm going to aim for, for how far back I want that grind to come. Pretty happy where I've got the grind. I like the shape, it's pretty symmetrical, and uh, nice and centered with a very thin, straight grind along the blade edge. And so now I'm just gonna do a little bit of surface conditioning. very happy with where the grind is and with the texture that I've got on the grind. So while I've added all of the bevel texture using the scotch Bright belts for these flat parts here, I'm actually gonna take this over and do some hand sanding to get a nice crisp edge and a contrasting grind direction. I want the bevel lines going this way and the flat part, the body of the knife, the lines going the other direction. So let's head to the hand sanding station. Right, I am pretty dang happy with where the blade is. It's nice and uh, the bevels look good. The brush texture on the, billet, on the bevel looks good with the straight perpendicular lines on the back of the body. So it's time to move on to making a handle. First, I gotta decide what materials I wanna use for the handle. I have a bunch of options. Let's take a look at some of them and find something that's gonna work well. I think I'll use this for the a top bit, I think I'll put a spacer made out of the G10. It's this, it's a nice warm brown color. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is, but I like it, so we're gonna try it.
We got Keith in the background. Uh, handle pieces glued up. So now we've got both of these. These are going to be our knife scales and they're going to sandwich on the knife pretty much just like this. And if I wanted the world's ugliest knife, I could be done right now. Ta-da. However, I think I'm gonna shape them a little bit. So I have to get both of these surfaces nice and perfectly flat so they'll attach well to the knife. I have to drill three holes in each one in just the right spots. And I have to add some shape to the front of the bolster area. After I've got those steps done, I can glue it onto the knife and let that glue dry overnight. This piece of burl that I'm using has a significant gap and weak spot right at the front of where I want the bolster to be. So I need to fill that before I move along. And I'm going to go in and fill these pits using sawdust and super glue to make it a little stronger and not full of holes. Our epoxy has had time to cure, so now we've got the handle scales attached, nice and strong, the pins are in there, the, the glue is, uh, is completely solid, and it's time to start shaping our handle all the way down. done a lot of the machine shaping and now I want to do a little bit more refinement on the handle so I'm taking the whole knife over to this knife vise which is designed to hold the knife by the blade and let me work on the handle from all sorts of different angles. Got the whole handle sanded down to 800 grit, which is pretty smooth. And now what I'm gonna do is the same thing that I did on the front of the handle scales here, is I'm going to coat the whole thing in super glue. I have some very thin super glue, I pour it on, I wipe it off with a cloth, some of it gets absorbed down into the wood. I'll then sand it back up to 800, and that leaves a very thin layer of super glue embedded in the wood, and then I can polish that on the buffing wheel. Not too far from the end now. The only things I have left to do, I believe, are to add my mark onto the blade and then sharpen it.
There are a lot of different ways to sharpen a knife. I have one of these sharpening sets and I think it does a good job, so that's what I'm going to use. Okay, just to make sure that I'm getting the angle right or that I'm getting a good consistency, I'm just gonna draw with a permanent marker right along the edge and then I'm gonna do a couple passes on either side and see if all of the marker is being removed. If it is, then great, it's doing what I'm supposed to do. If it leaves a silver stripe along the top or the bottom of the ground edge, it means that my angle, doesn't mean my angle is wrong, it just means that I haven't ground through all the way at the top or bottom of the blade to where I want to. Now that it's sharp, this knife is complete. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this. This It fits nicely in my hand. It's not overly bulky. It's the kind of thing you just maybe have on your hip and it's not gonna weigh you down much. It's, uh, it's very sharp, got a little bit of curve into it. I think you'd be able to use this for a lot of good stuff. And I really like, uh, I like how that turned out. Got a decent point, but it's, uh, it's very sharp, but it's not like very tapered. So I wouldn't be worried about like stabbing this into a piece of wood or something if that was my goal. And uh, yeah, I like that. It's, it's not like a huge hunting chopping knife. You're not gonna take down trees and branches with this, but you can definitely cut with it. Nice utility abilities. Pretty happy with how it all turned out. <laughs> I'm used to making knives with much longer blades so I can like slide the whole blade down through it instead of this little shorter blade where I don't have as much play, but there you go. Look at that, beautiful. Let's see if I can do the, the hair test. I don't grow a lot of hair on my arms. It's not exactly the best whittling test in the world, but I do have a popsicle stick here and Certainly shaves through that beautifully. Thanks so much for watching. It's been really fun showing you guys how I make a knife and I'm gonna keep doing this more in the future. This knife is going to be available for sale, but it is going to be offered to my Patreon supporters first. So if it's still available by the time you're seeing this video, there should be a link down in the description. If it's sold, then it's sold and better luck next time. Guys, all of your support means the world to me and it's what makes making these videos possible. So the normal things like comment and subscribe to the channel, those are great. You can ring the bell to get notifications about when I upload new stuff, but I am also just starting out. And if you know of anyone who enjoyed watching me before when I was on the King of Random, go ahead and let them know that I have my own channel now if you think they might be interested in seeing what I'm up to. 